Getting a business off the ground requires data-driven strategy and truly exceptional product. But entrepreneurs know there is a lot more to building a business than analytics and sleek design. We want to know what makes founders tick, how they pivot to tackle the hard stuff, what keeps them up at night, and what keeps them going each day. I'm Jenny Rudin. And I'm Katie Demo, And we're the co-founders of Brass Clothing and your hosts for Making It Happen, a show where we have raw, honest conversations with other founders like ourselves. Join us for fly-on-the-wall access to intimate discussions about what it's really like to start, run, and grow a business. This is Making It Happen. There's two types of entrepreneurs out there those who go solo and those who seek out a partner. And while a co-founder can be an incredible support system, finding the perfect person is not as simple as it seems. After all, your business is your baby. So it's of the utmost importance that your business partner is someone you trust, like a life partner. For Lizzie Carter, building her hair care brand, Only Curls, with her partner and co-founder, Hugo Lewis, meant combining both. Today, we're talking to Lizzie about the decision to work with a co-founder, navigating the relationship, and making important decisions together. Welcome, Lizzie. We're so thrilled to have you here. Lizzie, we obviously want to dive in immediately to Only Curls, but just to set the stage a little bit in advance, we understand that you had a prior career as a fashion designer. So could you tell us a little bit about what prompted that shift of industries and Um, you know, was it seizing a market opportunity? Was it a personal need? Give us a little bit of the backstory. A bit of both, really. Well, I I worked in fashion for 10 years. I actually, I I was actually a lingerie designer. It's kind of random how I fell into it. Um, Over here, there's one course, uh, one university um, in the country that they do a lingerie design degree. Um, And at 17, I kind of, I, I knew I wanted to go into fashion. And chose that course because it was sort of very, it was vocational and they had great industry connections. So I knew it would lead to a job. So I worked um, at various companies over 10 years. I worked for Nordstrom in the States. I worked for Abercrombie and Fitch in the States um, and then moved back to the UK in 2015 and worked for a supplier we used to design. I designed all the swimwear for ASOS. Um, I mean, you guys know a lot about fashion and how fast paced it is and it, it was long days and a lot of hours. I think I'm a perfectionist. I was always doing overtime. And at, at one point, I just thought, you know, I really want to be doing this for myself. I then, I think as well working in fashion, it's, um, it, you're even at a big corporation, you have, you're working on a little sort of business within a business. So it is quite entrepreneurial, even though you're working for a large corporation. And it was a lot to build about building a product range, designing a range that was ultimately going to sell. So it was kind of like running your own business within a business, which I think is what sparked me to want to start my own thing. Um, And at the same time, I was turning 30. I'd done it for 10 years and I was just looking for something new. Um, My partner, Hugo, he worked he, he was self-employed and he worked from home and I'd leave the house. I'd leave him at home every day working from home and I'd go to the office and I'd be getting back at seven, eight o'clock. And he was like going to the gym in the middle of the day and he was much more sort of in control of his own time. And I kind of wanted that for myself too. So then now zoom up a little bit, you're wanting to create a role for yourself, a career that lets you have more time. Was that part of the impetus? How did your business come into fruition. I'd always wanted to start my own thing. I think fashion is a really intimidating sort of business to start because you are, you guys know, you've got multiple styles, multiple sizes. It's expensive to to set up. Um, And I didn't have the time or the money really to, to start something like that without investment. Mm-hmm. And so I think that was where I kept getting stuck on what business I was going to begin. Um, and Hugo and I had kind of talked about starting something together just as a little side hustle or as kind of more of a hobby. I read an article. Actually, it's kind of it's just kind of random. I was standing at the tube one day waiting for him. He was running late and I was just swiping through my phone, reading stuff and came across a blog post that was from Shopify. And it was about a business that had started with just one product, one single product. And when Hugo 
got met me, I was like, this is what we've got to do. If we're going to start a business, we're overthinking it. Let's just try and figure out one product and go for it. Um, yeah. And it kind of, in my mind, simplified things. It's like, right, this is it. We've just got to, we can, this is easy. I spend my life developing like thousands of SKUs, thousands of designs every year. If we can just come up with one product, that's easy. Tell us a little bit more about that. So so you came up with the one one product, one business concept one product for one business, and then and then what happened? Were you terrified? Like I'm curious. Well, I'm curious how it became. It went to hair. Was yeah. Like, how did that like come about? So I obviously have curly hair, wavy hair, um, and yeah. it's it kind of at the same time. We kind of had this conversation. We're going to start something. We didn't know what it was going to be. We didn't know it was going to be. I mean, Hugo's really into surfing and windsurfing and kite surfing, and then I, I mean. We, or I was in fashion. We we hadn't decided what that. We were like, let's just try and think of something. And this was ongoing for a few months. And then um, one evening, I was struggling with my hair, looking for new hair products. When you've got curly hair, you spend your whole life looking for the right hair products. Right. Trying to there's always going to be something there that you think is going to be the miracle product that's going to make your hair less frizzy, define your curls. But you spend your lifetime looking for that product, and you're always willing to try new things. Um, and I'd remembered um, having an intern actually when I uh, was working in America and she told me that she had a special towel for her curly hair. I was like, I, I remember thinking about it at the time being like, oh, that would be great. And I sort of forgot about it. And for some reason it came in my head and I started trying to find one. Um, and there was nothing available over in the UK. Um, it, it just wasn't a thing here. And I was like, well, and I was about to spend like 30 pounds on shipping to ship um, one of these is a microfiber towel um, mm-hmm. over from the States um, that was specifically developed for curls. And I was like, right, well, if I'm looking for this, other people are going to want this. So it, and that was where the towel idea came about. Um, so we literally started the brand with 500 quid each. I got some towels sampled, um, a couple of rounds of samples, got them made. We launched with like 50 of each color. It was so low budget. Um, and we just, we just went for it. And, um, I'm an overthinker. I mean, I think as a designer, you're always like, oh no, that could be better. Or the photos could be better. Or we should be doing this before we launch. Whereas Hugo is just more like, no, let's just go for it. It's better. Just get started. So we just, we got these towels made. We took the pictures ourselves, like in our bathtub. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. um, we started a Shopify store. I think you get like your 30 days free trial. And I'd already set up an Instagram, just the kind of posting curly hair pictures. We had a few hundred followers um, and we just went for it with the towels. So can you tell us a little bit when about when you started to feel the momentum of your business growing and you knew that you guys had to make a change? Yeah. So once once we started seeing sales, we were kind of like, and we started seeing our following grow. And this was just on the towel. I mean, the towel, it still is one of our number one products. It really is great. It really, it's amazing how much difference it can make um, to your hair, but compared to a normal towel. So it's still a great product, but it was still just one, one product. Um, but once we'd started making sales on that, we were like, right, this, this is definitely a thing and this is worth investing in. Um, and we, in terms, like we, I think basically having a few sales gave us the confidence that we could build a business in this sector, and we went ahead and found a UK supplier to find out if they would be interested in working with us to help us develop some hair products. So UK manufacturer, I should say, cosmetics manufacturer. Um, and at the time, they were they've actually our manufacturer that we work with is really their business has grown. At the same time as that's nice, they were very small when we we started working with them quite in sort of work with very niche small, other small brands. Um, so we had to kind of sell our idea and try and um, get them on board, um, which we did. And that took a year to develop the products and get them perfect. Um, and that obviously took a little bit more investment than the towels. Um, but really fun kind of process. And we launched, we launched with a styling cream and a styling gel in 2018, early 2018. Um, we had a baby in that time as well. Um, so I was actually on maternity leave when we launched the actual cosmetic hair products. 
um, which actually gave me more time because I wasn't going to the office every day. We were really lucky. We had a baby that didn't sleep in the night, but did sleep well in the day and was kind of easy in the day. So um, I really utilized my maternity leave to, to build the brand. So at this point, we had four cosmetics products in the range, as well as the towels um, and a few kind of fun little merch things. Um, but we were featured in the Daily Mail over here. It was over a long weekend. And I think we were featured in the Daily Mail and then the sun picked up the story and the headline was these amazing before and after pictures of curly haired women using the products and how much they were transforming their hair. And the pictures were amazing. The reviews were amazing. Um, and it was featured in the mail. The next day, the sun picked it up. The next day after that, Glamour magazine picked it up. Um, and who, what, where, and it was like across a weekend we were featured in all these. Um, wow! It, it was amazing. Um, and That's we, so fabulous. It was great, and we'd gone. You know, we had gone from having like a hundred orders a week to suddenly having like two thousand orders in a day, um, which we did not have um, enough stock sitting there for. It was it was exciting and stressful because um, we we were like two weeks away from our delivery, but we had all these people on the website. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, what are we going to do? So we're suddenly there frantically trying to figure out how to take pre-orders and what app are we going to install to be able to take pre-orders on this stuff because otherwise we're going to lose out on the sales. So I feel like with every exciting time when running a business, there's always the stress going alongside always, it. Always. Let's talk about the stressful parts because I'm really curious. What? How do you and Hugo handle stressful situations? What? Like, What's the dynamic? He is... We, we, we're good for each other. Like I'm very high stress. He's very low stress. So we kind of balance out somewhere where we need to be. Um, he, yeah, he, he definitely helps me stay calm. Um, I really, I, I, I'm more customer facing than Hugo. So I do speak, I always see, I've got a team that helps me now, but I always handled the customer service. Um, and I have really high, um our customer service is like one of the the key things to our business that sets us apart like I, it's mm-hmm. so important to me that the customers have a good experience and that the products are working for them and that they're happy um so we kind of i think that in because of that i it makes situations more stressful for me because if we're having stock issues and we've got customers waiting i'm the one talking to them and trying to figure out how to communicate that kind of thing so so yeah i think we in terms of stress and how we handle it we definitely help balance each other. And what does he say to you in those times? He's just like, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's hair products. We just tell them and look at the customer. I mean, the thing is as well, customers, in all fairness, the customers I think have enjoyed being part of our journey. Um, They know we're a small brand. They know our story. They've seen pictures of us packing the parcels around our daughter. And when we have these issues, um, they like to hear about it. So when we had this, you know, we took these pre-orders, we'd had this daily mail feature. We just emailed all the customers like, you know, we're really sorry to keep you waiting on your order. Um, we had this surprise press that we had no idea that was coming and we're a really small brand and it's just taken us a little while to pack all these orders up. And people yeah. really enjoyed being part of that kind of story. Every entrepreneur at some point or another comes to the point where they are thinking about whether or not to have a business partner. Um, You obviously and Hugo were partners in life and your personal lives prior to launching this company. Tell us a little bit about what your dynamic was as partners and, and how you think about embarking on this chapter with a business partner do you have any advice to give other people who are weighing the pros and cons of going into business with their with their life partner who might want to do it on their own Mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about all that thought I think for Hugo and I honestly with Only Curls there's never really been a whole entire thought process behind things we've done we've just gone for it and done Mm -hmm. it at the times that felt right and it was the same with the partnership like I never really thought about any pros and cons of doing it with Hugo it was just like we wanted to do it for something fun and we didn't really and the product it's like we didn't overthink it nothing's been overthought but it somehow worked out so I think we have been we've worked really hard but we've also um hit certain trends or certain things that we hadn't even thought about that we were really Mm -hmm. lucky with and I think one of the things is our partnership. When you, when, if you go and I look at our different skill sets, they are completely different. Our personalities yeah. are quite different as well. And like, I'm the more creative. We work in completely different ways. I mean, 
I drive him crazy with my kind of like creative kind of scattiness. Like he comes and looks at my laptop and I've got a million things on my desktop and he's just like, oh my gosh, how can you work like that? But somehow I do. Um, Whereas he is a bit more um, strategic in the way that he works and he's very good at, he's really good at delegating, which I'm not. I like to keep control of things and I kind of have a tendency to hold on to things until I really can't cope anymore. Whereas he's like, no, you know, we need to be doing this way ahead of when I'm kind of agreed to, to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just complement each other. He really works on the tech side of things. He's um, He does all our email marketing. He does all of our, he always is done kind of our Facebook ads, Google ads, that kind of thing. Um, right. Does the website. Um we, because we've never taken investment, everything's always been quite low budget. We've done a lot of things for ourselves. Um, and then I did all the kind of branding, social media, product development. So our skill sets are completely different. Um, mm-hmm. And somehow that that, compl- that then obviously complements, we complement each other and we've been able to build this business together without spending a lot of money on external help, which I think has... Um, it was. It has worked for us for other brides. It has means that it's grown quite slowly, um, but that's kind of the way that it's grown has worked quite well in conjunction with our personal life. Um, and I think being life partners, that also means that we are in the same position at the same time. It's like we've got the same similar amounts of time to give, and, and financially we have kind of the same budget to put into it. At this point, you guys are both full time on the business, right? No, I am. Um, when we decided to go full time, I, I I didn't go back to my job after maternity leave. Like I think that was all okay. my goal. The goal for me was to have a job that worked really well alongside family life. Like yeah. you only get so long when your children are little, and I wanted to be able to pick her up from nursery to do the or to school, and I want yeah. to spend time with them in the week. And and what that means for me, I mean, I think now so many people are working like that since COVID. But back then, it was very unusual to be working from home and to kind of work the kind of random hours that we do. Uh, what what uh, Only Curls means for us is that we can take a bit of time out in the day, spend time with our children, and then we put them to bed and we work 7 till 10, 11 o'clock at night. Um, mm-hmm. But that's fine because it's for ourselves and we enjoy it. Um, so I didn't go back to my job after maternity leave. I, I left that and focused on Only Curls. Um, at that time, I wouldn't say it was, it was full time. At that time, we kind of calculated, OK, we need to be making this amount of money um, for me not to go back to my job. Because by the time I paid for nursery fees, travel, I, I only had to make about £100 a week um, on the business to cover that mm-hmm. um, difference. So um we it was a quick decision for me to able to be to not go back and focus on the business and actually oh, yeah. Hugo he still does some of his event stuff now he he um still does a little bit alongside but he is pretty much full-time only curls now and then this year we started um employing other other people into the business so it sounds like it was a pretty um obvious choice for you guys for you not to go back to work for you to go full time it just seemed like it made sense and it, there probably wasn't too much like tension around that decision um has there been a time when you guys have been like really on the opposite side of the spectrum when it comes to a problem um love to hear a little bit about something like that and how you navigate it yeah for the most part i think we, when we have different it's always a compromise and we come to the to the best decision um he goes way more um he will take more risks than me um and it, it, i am a bit more i'm very, much more cautious especially when it comes to things like stock levels and placing those orders um but it sort of i think works out because we come to a good compromise um there are times i mean i think one thing about being partners in life as well is that when you're frustrated with with your partner you can you tell them whereas if you're frustrated if your co-founder is a friend um it's and you're not living in the same house it's like I guess communication is perhaps a little bit harder whereas like for Hugo and I if we're disagreeing on something we can fight it out until it's until it's solved um but for the most part we do agree on stuff it's just that I tend to hold on to things longer than I should. Like customer service and answering those customers should have been something that I got help with a long time ago, but I enjoyed it. And it was like, I 
it, customer service was my thing. And it was like, I wanted to keep doing that side of things until it got to the point where I was like, I'm doing nothing else. Like, this is crazy. So he would have yeah. got somebody on board probably six months before I did. Um, so we do disagree, I think, um, it, it, on some things. It's mainly because of my kind of like controlling nature. Um, but for the most part, I think we always come to a good compromise. It's always hard to give up on stuff like that because one, um, it's critical to your business. I mean, if you're building a business around amazing customer experience and it's, you know, you're giving so much of it every day, it's hard to train that and it's hard to pass that off. So I can really understand where you're coming from. With yeah. That. I mean, in hindsight, Hugo is totally right. We've got three girls on it now who are doing a better job than I did because the fact is, is like they focus on that and they can... So they yeah, log right. on and they focus on that. Whereas right. I was trying to do a million different things. And it's the same with packing right. the orders. I was like, oh, but I'm not ready to pass it over to a fulfillment place because I really like packing these orders and putting special things into right. people's parcels. How are they going to know how to do that? But actually, ultimately, I didn't have enough time to do it. So a lot of it was rushed and then people would get, okay, it wasn't all the time. You know, people would get the wrong thing. And I'm like, well, that's because I didn't, I was doing it with baby screaming in the background and not having time to do it. So Right. It, it's yeah. We I think we've outsourced things at about the right time. I feel like you've peppered in a lot of different like advice for um, people who are thinking about finding a co-founder in this conversation, which has been really helpful. Um, but if you could really like um, distill it for us, what do you think is the most important thing in picking a business partner? I think it's looking at your skill sets and seeing how they complement each other, but also are, are different enough that you can both work on different things. Because I think if you are, if your set of expertise is the same, you're going to have too much overlap in the roles that you do for the business. And that's going to, one, cause problems because you're going to have conflict over who's doing what and it, it just doesn't make sense. But I think if you are both taking on completely different roles, it's going to allow you to grow the business much more quickly um, and I think would make a much more successful relationship. I also think what you said about being able to talk with your partner or your husband or um, boyfriend, whoever, girlfriend, whatever, your life partner, the way that you can exchange uh, thoughts and feelings with your partner like that is, um, is a really, really nice way of being able to, to communicate with a business partner as well. Sometimes it's really important just to say what the hell is on your mind. Yes. And it's very easy or it's easy for me at least to do that with my husband because I can just be like, it's your personality WTF. type too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's your personality um, type too. Yes. And when you're working with a friend or working with someone that you don't know as well, you can hold on to things. And um, it seems to me like from having this conversation with you that you guys don't really get hung up on things because you just address them and move on. Yeah. And that has probably allowed you to grow even faster than you know, because you're not getting stuck. Yeah, I think you're right. And also it, at the same time, it's easy for me to say to Hugo, I don't want to do that right now. I, I'm not working yeah. on that right now. I don't want to talk yeah. about only calls right now. And he can say the same to me. And it's easy for us to like, turn it off and say, right, okay, no, we're not, we're not going to do any only calls this afternoon. That's, that's fine. Um, whereas mm -hmm. like, I think if you had a business partner that you couldn't be as open with, or it, it wouldn't, I perhaps find it. I perhaps find myself working when I am not in the mindset to be working. Because for me, I'm much more productive. Is if I'm like, you know, you want to get in the zone, you can do amazing things. But if you're not really feeling it, it's just better just to take that time off, take that couple of hours off, and then come back to it when you're more in the mood. Yeah, I've, I've also seen some successful partnerships between siblings for that same reason. Yeah, sure. You grew up together. You can say whatever the hell you want to each other whenever you want, and yeah. it's just. It kind of works. No, I think you're yeah. absolutely correct. It, you know, it's funny because when we're thinking about this episode, obviously you can find all sorts of partnerships out there. Some yeah. are life partners, some are siblings, some are parent child. That's mm -hmm. another interesting yeah. dynamic. Mm -hmm. And then some are, you know, perhaps you might've met someone in your full-time job prior to running this business full-time that had a complementary skill set to your point and right. gone into business with them. But I find it extra fascinating to take advice and guidance from you because all of the skills that you and Hugo have developed in your 
personal lives are applicable when it comes to open communication, making sure things are out there on the table yes. sooner, um, and addressing them expeditiously, you know? Yeah. So I feel like that's just great takeaway for someone thinking about embarking on this journey with a partner. If you're, ner- if you're passive aggressive, doesn't it work great. <laughs> you know, if you hold things back and are worried, scared, afraid to throw things out on the table, you're really selling your business and your venture short because the number one benefit of having someone sitting in this chair next to you is being able to utilize them to the fullest and put your heads together on things. 100%. So 100%. I feel like that makes a lot of sense. If you were to give one piece of advice to someone on how to set your working relationship up for optimal success, what would that be? Is it communication? Is it um, making sure you stay? You know, what, what would that be? What would that be? Communication, definitely. I think I've touched on that. A lot. I think that's key. Mm-hmm. Um, I think being really clear on expectations and what each of your role is going to be. Um, mm-hmm. And also, I guess, just really important to discuss how your like working hours and what the setup's going to be and how. It, so I think communicate for me, communication, I think is, is key. Yes. Mm-hmm. Could you tell us about a time with Only Curls that was really tough for both of you and how you worked through it? What was, what did you do to get yourself out of that pickle and how did you support each other through that? We had a situation where our, we'd applied for an EU trademark um, and it had been rejected and we'd received a cease and desist from a um, company of a similar name, but not, it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't, um, we fought it basically in one, so it wasn't really a fair, fair thing that came came our way. But I, that was stressful. I mean, it was still fairly early days of our business. It cost us like ten thousand pounds to get this all sorted when it was a ridiculous. Thing. It was a really big company. It was a ridiculous thing that they that didn't do cosmetics, so they had no um, grounds with it but it was just a really frustrating thing and I think that happened at a time we were on holiday and it was like our first holiday in a year we were in Antigua and I get a phone call and I feel like that's one thing with running a business is it just doesn't stop and you try and go away and have a bit of time off and you get a phone call like that and I think that's what you have to be prepared for because there isn't you can't turn it off you can't it's um as much as we try it's it's always going and for me actually I feel calmer when I keep checking in and seeing how things are going if I'm like letting things run um and not checking in with my team and being completely um away from it in a way it makes me more anxious I'd rather just keep tabs Mm -hmm. on everything that's going on for anyone else out there who is kind of like you they've they went 10 years through a career and they're really needing a shift and some option, one of the options in front of them is starting their own company. Obviously that's terrifying for a number of reasons. How might you encourage them to take that plunge? What's one um, bit of wisdom you would impart? One, don't overthink it. Just go for it. I think there's always going to be a reason not to do things, but if you don't try and do it, you're not, it's never going to happen. So I think just don't set your expectations too high. Try and simplify it in your mind the way that we did by launching with one product. Like try and simplify your idea and see how you could do something low budget. And just, you know, you don't have to take loads of risks. Like if you do start something, you can continue doing your full-time job and do it alongside. Maybe it's different. I mean, we did start at a time before we had a family. I think if we had a family and I was working, that would have been very difficult because I don't know how I would ever have found any extra time. Um, but if you can start it alongside your job and then potentially like instead of doing a five day week, do a four day week. So then you have one day to focus on your business and kind of gradually ease into it. I feel like when starting a business, everybody thinks it has to be all or nothing. Um, and, and I would say, well, why does it have to be like that? Like you, you can do it alongside something else and do it more as a side project to begin with so, so that you get some kind of traction on it before you go all in. So I latched onto something she said yeah. instantly. Tell me. That was um, one of the things I find that one of the things that I believe to be the biggest asset of working with a partner is 
actually when you have a difference of opinion, when you have two thoughts on how to tackle a problem, what the right solution is, because pretty much 100% of the time, working your way to a compromise in the middle results in the best possible outcome for your business for that problem that you're facing in that moment. And when you're in it alone, you don't really have an opportunity to soundboard with someone who has the same ultimate goals as you, which is, you know, what's the best possible solution to this problem? Yeah. And I felt, I felt like that really resonated with me. I totally, uh, that came through like loud and clear for me as well. Um, and I think that that is the reason why you choose to have a co-founder is to help is to have someone to sort of balance you in a lot of ways. Yeah. At the end of the day, isn't that really the entire point? No. I think Having so. Having another head. Having another head. In because the there's a couple of reasons. I mean, there are a couple of reasons. One, it is a journey. It's ups and downs always. And it's nice to be able to share that with someone. Mm -hmm. In Lizzie's case, I think it's really interesting that she gets to share their her life partner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, he's probably the person that knows her best in the world. And that's really interesting that they get to like share that together. We have both, I think, expressed that we probably wouldn't like work, ha be able to start a business with our like husband. She really opened my eyes to what it might be like to like, I saw it in a different light today. Yeah. And I really think there could be some value in working with someone who knows you so well and, and who out. has the communication, yeah. um, the way that partners that are raising kids or have, are married, something like that. Like when you're, when you have that sort of connection, mm -hmm. um, when you do, although I have to say, obviously you and I haven't, um, ever been married, but <laughs> this, is true. this is true. We haven't not yet anyway, but we have done a good job of fitting it, fi um, figuring out communication. Oh, I agree completely. And I also think that is a testament to past experience, frankly, yeah. with other business partners. Yeah. Both, of, both you and I obviously have had partners before. And I just feel, I feel like you learn every step of the way when you're in business with different people, different personality right. types. At the end of the day, communication is, is key. key. Right. Not letting things go unsaid. Right. Fester inside and always knowing at the end of the day that the person sitting across from you wants to know what's on your mind. Yeah. 100%. Should be the default assumption. 100%. Yeah. And I always really appreciate tremendously because I have a young son. So working from, you know, I pick him up from daycare every day at 4 PM. I have to, I'm off. And Jenny and my team, but Jenny led by you is like, there's, zero expectations of me from those times from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. when I'm putting my son, you know, taking care of my son, dinner, bed, whatever. Time with him. Yeah. He, there's zero expectations of me. And, and that is, I think one of the things that I appreciate so much about our partnership mm -hmm. is just that you guys really respect that. Like I'm a mom too, and that I have to, um, have time to be with my son. And, um, and it's just, really never a question. It's never something I ever feel guilty about. Nope. Um, and, and it's never, and it never comes up as like a huge problem. It's just something that we can it's work not, around. We, yeah. we don't work around it. We work with it. It's right. It's part of the fabric of right. our day. Right. Our yeah, totally. Yeah. It, but I do think that it's partially because we just from the very beginning, it was like, this is the schedule and this is the community. Like this is, we were, we were upfront about it with each yes, other about like, it it's also a testament to you, though, for setting that time for yourself and establishing well, it. Yeah. I Thanks. mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think people don't do that enough. And while there are so many perks to running your own company and launching your own business and so many risks and terrifying moments, knowing that there is that added flexibility. Lizzie talked a lot about this, yes. too, um, as something she was really looking forward to having at it, with her next career chapter. Yeah. Um, it's it's not nothing it's super important and it, it's a it's a great asset to that next chapter too 100 yeah. percent